Hello everyone! Now that it is June 23rd and I'm 195 pages into Oliver Twist, I thought it was about time I started filming this reading vlog because I have not yet. And this is our book for June. It is already June 23rd. I have read almost half of this book and I have yet to talk about it. Um, I just got back from my holiday slash vacation yesterday, last night, and I have just been in this days of unpacking, putting books away that I got on vacation, filmed a little video for that, unpacked my suitcase, did a few things around here, my grocery shopping, just a bunch of random stuff that I've had to do, and I have yet to read Oliver Twist since before I went on vacation. I am going to sit down now relax. I am so tired, so I think the thing that I want to do the most right now is to just read a bit of Oliver Twist. I am really, really enjoying it. It is so different from the Pickwick Papers. It is crazy to see the difference in tone and mood from Charles Dickens' first book, Pickwick Papers, to Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist is an orphan story, and it's one of the most iconic orphan stories, and something that I'm really loving is Charles Dickens' humor, of course. He is funny when he's not supposed to be funny, and it just makes for a wonderful reading experience. And something that I was very surprised at was how sad and angry this book is making me at the same time. I wasn't expecting to be this frustrated with so many of the characters. I don't like almost all of the characters. I think the only character I really like is Oliver himself. And I just feel so bad for him and I just want more for him. I want him to be happy. I want him to be treated well. And he's just not, he's not happy. He's not being treated well. <laughs> it's just quite, quite sad. So I think what I'm going to do is just keep reading and update you guys when I have more to say. But for right now, I think the main thing is that this book is making me really upset um, and really angry, but in a good way because it's it's interesting to, to think about what makes the reader angry, what makes uh, the story make you feel a certain way, what is Charles Dickens trying to do by writing the story this way, and his writing is just amazing, so obviously it's Charles Dickens, I always love his writing. This doesn't have anything to do with Oliver Twist, but I am also reading um, this is a buddy read with my wonderful friend Sarah from her YouTube channel, Sarah's Perusals, who I love very much. She and I are buddy reading The Mysteries of Udolpho, or Udolpho? I think it's Udolpho, by Anne Radcliffe. And we are buddy reading this for, um, for ourselves, but we also want to buddy read it so that we have it done by the end of July we are striving for. I have been the worst buddy reader because I told her that I would read it on vacation and I ended up not taking it with me and I thought okay I'll just listen to the audiobook and I didn't because I was reading another book and I didn't have time. I was just a really bad buddy reader. Anyway, um, so now I'm going to pick this back up again and I'm I've been really enjoying it, so that's great. And we also wanted to read this because we want to buddy read Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen for Jane Austen July, which is why we wanted to finish it by the end of July, because Jane Austen was influenced a lot by this book in her writing of Northanger Abbey, as well as the main character, Catherine, also reads this book or references this book in Northanger Abbey. So that's why we wanted to read it. I am on page... I'm on chapter 13, page 140. This is also the amazing bookmark that Sarah gave me. Um, she sent it to me in the mail, and it's just the greatest. It is a little um, Vincent Van Gogh bookmark. So that's what I've been using, and he matches perfectly with this book cover, which I just think is wonderful. So I'm going to be reading some of Oliver Twist and reading some of Mysteries of Rodolfo tonight and we'll see how far I get, but I'm really sleepy. It's only 9.20, it's really not that late, but let's see how, let's, let's just read, let's just read. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I'm only one chapter in. I am on chapter two of the second book, and something just... Trust against this is all the time, where something will happen where it'll feel like, oh, maybe something's going in a good direction, or a more positive direction, and then the second that you think that, he turns it and makes it a negative and horrible. <laughs> It's just so sad. It's like every time I'm like, oh, maybe this is the this is the chance that Oliver will get, or maybe this is where something goes right, and it just all goes wrong, and it is just so hard to read it sometimes, because like things are getting revealed about Oliver's mother, and now there are these women. I don't want to give anything away, but it's. Yeah, it's the second chapter of the second book, and I am just frustrated <laughs> because every time I'm like, oh, okay, okay, getting my hopes up, and then it's just, trusting just crushes them. So, thought that I would update you guys on that because he keeps doing it, and it's so annoying, <laughs> but it keeps me intrigued, it really does, so I shall keep reading and continue to get frustrated. But now I'm going to highlight. Hello everyone, now that it is July 14th, I thought it was about time I filmed something else for this vlog and made it a bit longer because right now it is very short. So I will be talking about Oliver Twist and the Mysteries of Udolpho as well as some books that I recently purchased and that's going to be it. Um, this reading vlog doesn't really feel like a reading vlog, it really isn't a reading vlog. So that's what we will be doing. I'm going to start with Oliver Twist. So I did finish Oliver Twist. I ended up giving it three stars. Emma and I, as you guys just saw, had our Dickens versus Tolstoy debate regarding Oliver Twist, and it was so much fun. We always have the best times during our debates, and it was just an incredible joy, as it always is. Um, it was really interesting to talk about Oliver Twist because it was a three-star read, because there were positive and negative things to say. Sometimes, like War and Peace, it's really hard to talk about a book if it's if you see it as a five-star read, because you only have good things to say about it, and of course you can pick apart certain aspects that maybe could be questioned or worked upon or something, but yeah, so it was nice to have a three-star book where we could really figure out what we liked, what we didn't like, and if you want to hear all of our thoughts, the live show is on Emma's channel. It is an hour long. We try to keep it 
short and snappy. I really enjoyed it. I liked, I loved the beginning. I really liked the end. The middle part kind of lost me, and it's, it's definite, I'm glad that I read it, but I wouldn't recommend starting with Oliver Twist if you're new to Dickens. I would definitely recommend starting with one of his later novels, just because a lot of the things that I have issues with not really issues, but complaints, I guess, or things that, that I didn't love about this book, he improves upon and are much, much better in his later novels. Something that I will say is that I loved Nancy. Nancy was my favorite character. This book was dark and gloomy, but it had some hopeful moments and then were immediately dashed and went back to being very depressing and morose. Um, but overall, the atmosphere of this book was quite interesting because it was such a difference between The Pickwick Papers and Oliver Twist, his first two novels, and I'm really excited to see how Dickens grows. I think it's going to be really fun to go on this journey of reading Dickens and Tolstoy because I feel like Dickens' growth is going to be amazing to witness as a reader. So that was Oliver Twist. And then I did finish The Mysteries of Adolfo by Anne Radcliffe. This was my buddy read with my wonderful friend Sarah from her YouTube channel, Sarah's Perusals. If you aren't subscribed to Sarah, I cannot recommend her channel enough. She just, all of her videos, she as a person, makes me laugh hysterically and she always has wonderful things to say about books so just a little shout out to Sarah because she deserves all the love in the world and we had such a fun time reading The Mysteries of Rodolfo together it was a wonderful ex reading experience starting the book with her and reading it together and we really started at the beginning of the book loving it. It was full of these very enchanting descriptions they were incredibly detailed and it was just a beautifully written, lyrical, poetic book. But the more that we read, the more that it felt a bit tedious. I never knew that someone could use the word melancholy so many times in just one volume. Um, but it was just, at some point, kind of a little monotonous because it was just a bit, like it lost the effect. At first it was great because it set the tone, you felt the melancholy aspects of the book, and then towards the end I'm just like, oh, okay, melancholy, alright, it's just a word, it's just letters together forming a word, and it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so that was one thing that I just wish that she used the word less or maybe picked different words. She would repeat a lot of the same de descriptions over and over, which at first was really exciting, it painted such a vivid picture. But towards the end, it just, like like I said before, it lost its effect. Really enjoyed this book. Would recommend reading it. Would recommend taking it slow. Um, that's really the best thing that I think you could do with reading this book, just because it is quite of a slow read. The plot in itself is interesting. I expected a bit more from it. It was a bit predictable in certain ways. Um, so yes. Those are my thoughts on The Mysteries of Adolfo. Really liked it, um, didn't love it, and I'm glad I read it. And now I'm really excited to read Northanger Abbey, which will be seen in a few books. Then yesterday I went to my library's used bookshop where they have paperbacks for a dollar and hardcovers for two dollars, and I haven't hadn't gone in a while, and I really wanted to go. I also had a few books that I wanted to donate myself, and so basically you donate your books, you don't get any compensation for them because it's just a donation, and then they have a bookshop where they sell the books that they get donated. So I got three wonderful books that I was really excited to find there because it's kind of a hit or miss type of bookshop where you don't really know what you're going to find. And when I saw these three books, I was just super excited. So the first one is Martin Chuzzlewit by Charles Dickens. This is in the Penguin Black Spine. I am obviously collecting these for Dickens vs. Tolstoy, and I saw that it was only a dollar. It was in absolutely perfect condition. It doesn't even look like this person read it, or if they did, they didn't crack the spine. Um, and I'm very excited to read this for the book club, so I had to snag it don't know what this book is about. I think it's about Martin Chuzzlewit. I think that's a good guess. <laughs> and then the next two books I'm super, super excited about. They are two Everyman's Library editions. The first one 
The first one that I saw was Thomas Hardy's Jude the Obscure. I have a paperback of this book. Where is it? It's right here. I have it in the more vintage edition of the Penguin Black Spines. And yeah, so I have the paperback, but then when I saw the hardcover Everyman's, this is one of the older editions with the plain cover, and when I saw this, I had I had to get it. It was only $2. Um, and I love the Everyman's because they are just beautifully made books. Like, the, the type of materials that they use. The paper is really thick and creamy, and the, the hard cover is really sturdy, and I just love the designs of these. And they're absolutely beautiful under the dust cover. This one is maroon with the typical design. So I wanted to read Jude the Obscure for a while now, and I read Tessa the D'Urbervilles over a year ago, maybe? Maybe a year ago now? And I also love Far From the Men in Crowd. I just really, really love Thomas Hardy's books, and when I saw that they had a hardcover Everyman's, I had to grab it, even though I had it in paperback. I didn't have it in hardback in an Everyman, you know? It had to be done. It had to be bought. So, really excited to read this. Jude the Obscure is supposed to be incredibly sad, and if you know me, you know I can't pass up crying at a book. I just... there's nothing like crying at a story. I don't know how to explain it. It's very cathartic. I just love it. If a book will make you sad, especially a classic, then I will read it. Um, so, that's that. I think I was talking to my friend Mary from her YouTube channel, Mary Among Stories, and I think she might be reading this with me for a buddy read. So I don't know when that will happen. I think we might save it to the autumn or winter because it will kind of match the sorrow of the book, um, the, cooler, the cooler temperatures. Anyway, then the last book that I found was the Everyman's Edition of Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. Isn't this beautiful? So this one is one of the um, one of the newer editions because it has the illustration on the cover with all the dots. This one also has a green cover, which is absolutely beautiful. Northanger Abbey obviously is going to be read very soon because Sarah and I want to read it for Jane Austen July. I don't know when this month we're planning on reading it. Um, I have to talk to Sarah about that, but this will be read incredibly soon, which I just can't wait for. Then, the last book that I got is right here. Did you see it? It was hiding this whole time. That is the Clothbound Edition of War and Peace. This thing is gigantic. I was not expecting it to be this big, even though I know War and Peace is huge. I just wasn't expecting it to be so massive. So here is... Here is it next to Anna Karenina, which you can see. The size difference. I mean, they're both very, very big books. But anyway, is this not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? I love that the designer Corley Bigford Smith, she put the Comet of 1812 on the cover. I just absolutely love that. I love stars. I love star motifs. And so the fact that this book is covered in stars is just absolutely perfect. As you guys know from my 1001 reading vlogs of War and Peace, this is one of my favorite books of all time by my favorite author of all time, Leo Tolstoy. So I, of course, had to get The Cloth Bound. This was actually on sale on Amazon from $30 to $13. And a funny story. So my mom lost a bet with me and my sister. And this was my prize. <laughs> so my sister asked for a pasta salad. I asked for a book. And it was on sale, so I didn't feel too bad for to, to make my mom buy me a cloth bound. But, yes, so thank you, Mom, <laughs> for buying me the cloth bound of War and Peace. Um, it is now one of my most treasured possessions because I absolutely love collecting the cloth bounds. I always wait until a book is a favorite. I always read it in a different edition, and then if it is a favorite, I get it in cloth bound. They aren't... I get a lot of questions about the cloth bound. Are they good to to read from for a first read? I honestly wouldn't recommend reading from these books, which sounds ridiculous because what are you supposed to do with a book besides read it? Um, I just stare at these. That's what they do. They're there as um, 
as little trophies. But the design tends to rub off with a lot of use. If you don't mind that, you can definitely read from these editions, but I want these to stay absolutely perfect, so I don't really read from mine. I would recommend either putting some kind of protective covering around them if you want to read them, or reading from a different edition, getting it from the library, getting it online. This is just my opinion. You could do obviously whatever you want, but what I have, what I do is just when I read a book in the cloth bound from a different edition and I love it, then I treat myself to the cloth bound and don't read it. That sounds absolutely ridiculous, but that's the story of a book lover and a book collector. So, um, I hope some of you understand, because I kind of feel silly explaining that to people. I am reading two incredible books right now. Well, I'm reading... How many books am I reading right now? Three? Yes, I'm reading three books. One is an audiobook that is The Goldfinch by Donna Tart, which I have a copy of, but I'm listening to the audiobook. I'm liking it, but it's getting a bit tedious kind of want it to just be over. I'm reading it for the Dark Academics book club. I was really enjoying the first part of it. It's just way too long. I feel like the book should be cut down quite a lot because like it's a really great story and you can tell it in a concise way where it has much more of an effect on the reader. That's my opinion on The Goldfinch so far. I'm also reading Alexander Pushkin's Evgeny Onegin, which I am absolutely in love with. Probably going to be one of my favorite books of all time. I don't know where it will rank. It will rank incredibly high and I'm filming a whole separate reading vlog for it and it's coming out really well. I'm really proud of that reading vlog so I can't wait for you guys to see it and I'm just absolutely adoring that book. It is a story in verse by the wonderful Pushkin and it is my first ever Pushkin and I've just been Adoring it is not even the right word or phrase to use, um, more than adoration, honestly. Just absolutely fell in love with it. And then I am, of course, reading Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club slash debate, and it is my favorite book of all time. I'm rereading it for the first time from the Pavir and Volokonsky translation. It is stunning. Were we expecting anything less? No. Um, so that is also going to be getting its own separate reading vlog, and I can't wait for you guys to see that as well because I am also loving that reading vlog as well. This one is kind of a mishmash of a bunch of different things, but I hope it has sufficed, and I wanted to just film this little update to bring you guys up to speed. I did have my Etsy restock recently, which went better than I could have imagined. It sold out the fastest it had, and I think it was probably my biggest restock that I've had. So if you ordered from my Etsy, I cannot thank you enough. It means more than I can put into words to me, and I just appreciate all of your support and kindness more than I can say. So. Uh, I've been very busy with uh, wrapping all of my Etsy orders. They are all out and in the world, and if you got one, then hopefully it's with you by now. And I'm just so excited to continue on with my author portraits. I have so many that I want to draw and create and bring out into the world for everyone, and I can't wait to do that. So I'm hoping to have another restock, because I want to make them more of a regular occurrence now. Um, I'm hoping to have one either by the end of July or beginning of August, so look out for that. Another restock will be coming soon. I've been getting quite a few questions about that as well. If you missed out on any authors that you wanted in particular, I will be bringing them back. So, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so sorry it's a little all over the place, but I'm glad that I can bring you guys up to speed, and we can now go on from here, and I will see you guys soon in another video. I hope you're doing incredibly well. I'm sending you my very best wishes, and happy reading.